Dorothy. All right, honey, get it out of your system. Let's have a great big flood of tears. You know what they told me in there? They said if you paid the store for what I took, maybe I wouldn't have had to serve time. You know how much it was, Dor. I didn't have the money. I'm not blaming you, Junie. I'm going to take care of you now and do all the things I should have taken time to do before. You mean, if there's a next time, you'll have the money? I'll have the money, but there won't be a next time. This all yours, June? Mm-hmm. Legally, I mean? All mine. Come on, climb in. I wish the dames in there could see what a big success my sister is. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Lyons, first arrested for petty theft, placed in custody of Sister June. Two years later, arrested for shoplifting, six months parole. Two years ago, arrested for jewelry theft. Sentenced three to five years, served 18 months. Will be released because of ill health next Tuesday. Today. Hmm. Should be on parole, won't you? For three years. Thanks, Dave. I'll see you later. Oh, uh, just a minute, Ben. Forgot to tell me why you're so interested in this girl. I'm building a library. Kind of a who's who. For, uh, Sally Casper? No, who's who for Ben Grace. Why, Ben? I got an idea. Quite an idea. Like to tell me about it? You'll hear about it soon enough. You're a dreamer, Ben. Man's only as big as his dream. We're gonna pull you out of the river someday. That's not part of the dream. By the way, did you ever dream of being chief of police? A long time ago, lots of times. Maybe I'll make you chief of police. You got an in with the mayor? Depends on which mayor you're talking about. Oh, Ben. Hmm. This dame. She's dynamite. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> Here we are, home at last. Home, huh? This is where you live. Mm -hmm. That's right, now it's your home too. You must be quite a secretary. To a very successful man. A bachelor? Well, as it happens, Mr. Jansen is a bachelor. Oh, Martha! I saw you drive up. Uh, this is my sister, Dorothy. How do you do, Miss Dorothy? Hi. Flowers are lovely. Mr. Jansen's chauffeur brought them over. No mm. card. Any messages? No, just the mail and the paper. Join me? No, thanks, honey. Not right now. June. Mm-hmm. What are you going to tell people while I'm staying here with you? That you're my sister. And that I popped up from under a cabbage leaf. Nobody knows anything about you. And nobody will know anything about you. And my probation officer? That is all confidential. Where I come from, you learn to figure all the angles. Hey. Who's this? That 
He's my boss, Frank Jensen. He gave it to me a year ago. You gonna marry him, Junie, or...? Uh... Do you think I should? I think it's a very good idea. The bathroom towels will look sensational. Jay? Jay. When I want a new monogram, I'll let Frank Jansen know. Don't you want to shower and see your room? Hot water. Soap. Clean sheets. Come on, sweetie, I'll show it to you. You know where I was yesterday at this time? In a sewing room with 600 dames making a denim uniform. Let's not talk about that ever again. Oh, you're here now, and you're starting a new life, and neither of us has a worry in the world. Dolly's watching television. Thanks. It's about time you showed up. Sally's been asking for you. So I'm here. This model's getting rough. Now, I've published a newspaper in Bay City for 30 years. And never have I used its columns for a crusade that I thought was more important than the one to elect Frank Jansen mayor. Obviously, the city government is rotten. Rotten, corrupt, evil. Well, everyone in City Hall knows who actually is running our city, Saul Casper. And when Saul Casper doesn't steal, he bribes. And when he doesn't bribe, he murders. For 15 years, his syndicate of vice has grown and grown and grown because the men elected to protect you from crime have been on Saul Casper's payroll. I urge you, I beg you. Saul? Use. How does Marlowe get away with that? Shut up, I want to hear this. To elect a man who's never been in politics. A man who is free from ties to politicians and gangsters. A man who will clean up Bay City. Ladies and gentlemen, vote for Frank Jansen for mayor. Ah, oh, Ben. Come on in the office. Who dealed them? Glad to see you, genius. That model is a rough old man. You must have a file this thick on Jansen's girlfriend. I got a file, Sally. <laughs> and I knocked the Boy Scout right out of the box. I told you there was a way to get to anybody. And the way to get to a reformer is to prove that he's not such a lily-white angel himself. That figures. Well, what do we use, genius? Pictures of him, tapes, checks he wrote? I got a file on Jansen's girlfriend. All it proves is that they're both clean as a whistle. You've been working on him a week. She's clean, she's clean. I can't help it if Jensen's too smart to leave any tracks. Oh, this is great. This is fine news to get at 10 o'clock Tuesday night, a week before election. Do you know what happens to bright boys like you and us if Jansen gets in? You can take all your fancy gimmicks and your camera rifle and you can... A dame is a dame. There's bound to be something you can nail her on. I couldn't get one picture of June Lyons. You mean you didn't even get a picture of her coming out of his house at two in the morning? What kind of a secretary is she? Probably a nice secretary. Maybe a nice girl. If you want to nail Jensen, you better try something else. Something good. You may be right, genius. If I can't get the girl alongside Jensen, I'll get the guy behind him. Marlo? Marlo. Without the journal, nobody had ever known about Frank Jensen. I'd advise you to take it easy where Marlo's concerned. You'd advise me. I'm going to take care of Marlo tonight. And you're coming with me. Uh-uh, Sally. Count me out. What's the matter? Rough stuff not in your line or something? It scare you, genius? No, it doesn't scare me. I don't believe in it. If he's smart, you don't have to use it. So I'm not smart. You're a bright boy, genius. 
and I'm glad to have you working for me. But do you know why you'll always be working for me and not vice versa? Why, Sally? An operator, he runs things. Up, down, sideways, rain or shine, he runs it. You got no jet engine in your belly that makes you operate. You'd rather read a couple of good books, wouldn't you, Jones? Wait, I'll show you something. Well, then, all you fellas, come in here. Boys, I called you in here to give you a demonstration of how I'm going to operate on Mr. Norman B. Marlowe. <laughs> Genius, you're just a chiseler out for a soft. You're not crooked and you're not straight. You take what you can get where you can get it, but you don't want any trouble. You'll die at age 66 in bed with three grand in the bank, but you'll never be an operator. Now go on out and get yourself some fresh air, but don't let it go to your head. Remind me never to send my son to college. That is, if I ever have a son. <laughs> Sure, Jansen's honest. Even if he gets elected, so what? You don't understand politics. In six months, they'll have him tied up, too. I've seen him come and go. Wyatt, this town will be so lily white, you'll be able to eat your dinner off the pavement yet. Miss June Lyons? Yes? Listen carefully to what I have to say. Sally Casper is going to take care of Norman Marlowe tonight. Call Jansen. Tell him to warn him. Better still, warn him yourself. Don't lose a minute. Who is this? A friend. Why don't you tell him yourself? Who are you? Hello. Hello. Uh, who's, who's, who's that? Nothing, honey. Go back to sleep. I thought I heard a man's voice. Uh, probably just some political crank trying to cause trouble. Why didn't you get his number? <laughs> I wish you had. <laughs> The man elected to protect you from crime have been on Saul Casper's payroll. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you for working so late, and good night. Mr. Marlowe. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Marlowe. Talk, Marlowe. Casper. You. Well, now, we, we can discuss anything tomorrow. I'm a sick man. My doctor's just warned me. You talk about me whenever you want to. I'm talking to you now. You can't frighten me. You can't stop me. You're going to stop backing, Jansen. You're going to stop printing all that stuff about me. I'm going to print all the truth about your vicious scheme. Rich boy, you're going to stop. You'll get a working over like those newspaper guys in Scenic City. Now we talk. 
listen to me? Get some water. He looks like he's dead. Don't make a federal case out of it. Get some water. It's too late for water. You killed him. You sure? Yes, I did at that, didn't I? Well, that's getting out of a jam the hard way. Open the window. Give him some air. Give him plenty of air. Come on, let's see if we can beat him down. clock a little before two. I thought about calling you, Frank, but well, who takes a phone call seriously at that hour? Now this horrible murder. Phone call in the middle of the night doesn't prove murder, Miss Lyons. Well, it's just too much of a coincidence. The Lieutenant, you don't seem to be very anxious to dig into this. What else could it be but a murder? Mr. Marlowe was your friend. He was backing you. Of course, you're going to jump to conclusions. Me? I take it a little easier. I don't mess around with politics or politicians. And that's how I've lasted 22 years in the department. Thanks, Miss Lyons. I know how to reach you. Are you sure you didn't recognize the voice? Could it have been someone from the office? Maybe if I heard it again, I'd recognize it. I'm sorry, Frank, but it all seems so fantastic. Don't blame yourself, June. You probably couldn't have done anything about it anyway. Thanks. I've got to get downtown. I'm glad you were here with me anyhow. See you this afternoon. Bye. Bye-bye. Lieutenant! You know, I don't think that policeman believed a word I said. They never believe anybody. Come on, let's get some sun. Yes. Good morning, Miss Lyons. Remember me? No, can't say that I do. The name's Ben Grace. Uh, what do you want? I want Frank Jensen for mayor. Oh, come in. Mm, nice looking place you have here. Thank you. Nice looking girl. Supposing you tell me why you're here. All right, Miss Lyons, I'll get to the point. Last night, I telephoned you about Marlowe. You. I wouldn't bother. I waited till they drove away. How did you know he... I knew. That's enough. But... Mr. Jansen is a nice man. But he doesn't know how to win elections. I'm not a very nice man. I know how. Takes a little dirt. And you have dirt to sell? I have dirt to sell. What do you want for it? Money? Not a penny. What then? Oh, decency. Clean government. Frank Jensen for mayor. Jensen's an idealist. You're a practical girl. He needs you, and you've made him pay for it. Oh, well, that's all right. I don't trust people who are not a little greedy. What do you want to tell me? Did you know Marlo? Yes. Sit down. Listen. You're going to stop backing, Jensen. You're going to stop printing all that stuff about me. I'm going to print all the truth about your vicious evil. Listen to me. Get some water. Too late for water. You killed him.
Where did you get this, Mr. Grace? It's not a question of where I got it. It's what you and Jensen are going to do with it. Uh-uh. I don't buy your bill of goods. Who sent you to me? Saul Casper himself? I assure you this is genuine. All I can do is give you a gun. If you haven't got guts enough to pull the trigger, I can't help it. No do it tonight, Mr. Grace. I don't like your brand. It's too cheap. It smells like some kind of trick. You probably invented it for oh, some... Oh, there's too much to invent. For instance, there's your sister out there. Her first arrest was for petty larceny. Then two years later, the rap was for shoplifting. And then... Get out of this house! Now, do you believe me? I don't like blackmail. I said get out and I mean it. I'm in the book. The name is Ben Grace, G-R-A-C-E. I'll let Mr. Jansen decide if he needs you. But I assure you, my sister and I... Somebody talking about me? I'd much rather do the talking for myself. Goodbye, Mr. Grace. How do you do, Mr. Grace? Meet you and his little sister, Dorothy. Hello, Miss Lyons. Uh, please call me Dorothy, won't you? The frank and open door. Dorothy, Mr. Grace is very late. Hey, I love that material. I love the feel of it. I'll wear it the next time I see you. Oh, you don't have to put it on just for me. Your sister's a nice girl. And she's going to stay that way. Remember, the number's expert 36567. Expert 36567. You got it. Not too much, honey. I guess I just have an awful lot on my mind. A lovely girl like you. You shouldn't have to worry about a thing, except looking beautiful and running a home for a man who loves you. Thank you. I, I, I guess I could have timed this a bit better. To set up a more romantic atmosphere. Fiddles playing off stage, bongo drums and all that sort of thing. But really. Why don't we get married and stop all this foolishness? Oh, Frank, not now. Not right away. Will you hold the offer open for a while? In other words, no? No, I don't mean no. I just can't think about it right now. I want to get Dorothy settled in... Preferably some... uh, someplace away from here, where she might not embarrass her prominent brother-in-law. You've known about her? What difference does it make? I want to marry you because I love you. She has nothing to do with it. So if that's the only reason, there's no reason at all anymore. I know there isn't another man. No, of course not. Come in. The door's open. What made you change your mind? Well, I talked it over with Mr. Jansen. After all, if it's what you say it is. 
What can you tell me that will help elect Mr. Jansen? Well, aside from Sally Casper, who's a low-grade moron with delusions of grandeur, there's Wilson and James. They were in the room when Marlowe was killed. The FBI's been looking for those boys for a long time. The blue gross is up 4% over last month, or 220,000. And this is the green, Mr. Casper. It's down a little, but all in all, everything seems to be running well ahead. Yeah, what do you want, genius? Your boyfriend Jensen's on TV. I thought you might like to look. Well, why not watch the clown for a while? Okay, Ames. Thanks. Go on. Hit the books for that fancy degree. You know, it's a pleasure having geniuses in the organization. I had a speech prepared for this last address before you go to the polls. But after thinking about it all day, I've decided not to use it. Instead, I'd like to talk for a few minutes about a crime which shocked all of us yesterday. A crime that should be the concern of the chief of police and the district attorney. But which, for some strange reason, they don't seem to want to look into. The crime, ladies and gentlemen, the murder of Norman Marlowe. The criminal, ladies and gentlemen, that leader of all that is vile and corrupt in our city, and one whose influence obviously reaches into the city hall itself, Sally Casper. How'd he get that? Tip, Mr. Casper. Chief went out and acted on his own authority. Mr. Casper, from where I sit, I'd say you better get out of town. Maybe the state. Maybe the country. You tell the man on top he'd better cover for me all the way. Wilson and James have been shooting off their mouths all morning. There's 9,000 pages of stuff up at the state's attorney's office. Sure stinks, doesn't it, boys? Who gave them the word, Saul? The more I think of it, the more it figures maybe Bright Boy did get some big ideas. If Ben Grace is that stupid, it would be a personal no, pleasure. No, not you, not anybody else. Let the genius go ahead. Give him rope. If it was him, I'll be back. I'll be back to do the sweetest job on the genius you ever saw. <laughs> We got 40 minutes to make it to the airport. Quiet! Quiet, everybody, please. An announcement from the newsroom. Mayor Robbins concedes defeat. <laughs> to the new mayor. Mm -hmm. Everybody will wonder where I went. Oh, 
It's so good just to sit here with you and relax, and try to realize it's all over. How does it feel to back a winner? You ought to know. Mm. You know the strangest thing for me tonight? All those people. I don't know them, they don't know me. All of a sudden, I realize that you and I and Frank, all of us are really working like the devil for them, to help somebody else. <laughs> I don't think I was ever that altruistic before. You talk too much. Why'd you do that? To see what you'd do. Oh, and how'd I do? You did fine. investments. And I haven't been able to find out anything either. I made one good investment for you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. When do I get the bill? Maybe it's on the house. Oh. <laughs> what? I was just thinking. Poor Frank. Mayor-elect and all night people have been buttonholing him for favors and from now on everybody will want something. And you've been playing hooky. Uh -huh. And I don't think I can write a very good excuse, either. You want to do him a favor? Certainly. Tell him to put Dave Dietz in as the new chief of police. Dave Dietz? Hmm. He's a good man. I thought he was one of that city hall bunch. Well, he's a good lieutenant who maybe never had a chance to do the job he'd like to. Best you could find. Well, you've been batting a thousand so far. I'll think about it. Good night. Good night, Dan. Why didn't you invite him in? Oh, don't look around for Martha. She kept her eye on me for you, but she coughed off hours ago. All right, honey. Come on. Let's get to bed. It's late. Oh, uh, I heard the good news about the election. Oh? Uh -huh. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. Jansen called up. Oh, did he? Twice. Oh. I wondered what had happened to you. Very disappointed. Oh, it runs in the family. What's that? How many people who just elected mayor call you up all hours of the night? <laughs> Big deal. Oh, it is. Especially when you're spending all hours of the night with somebody else. Aren't you asleep yet? I'm not sleeping. You want something? Yes. Glass of hot milk? Ben Grace. Oh, sweetie. You don't really. He just happens to be the first man you've talked to in a long time. Look, I don't expect you to understand my feelings. All head and no heart, planning every move to better yourself. I'm not like you. I've got a heart. And I've got to do what it tells me, no matter what. How long are we going to sit around waiting for that guy to tell us what to do? I got news for you guys. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. But if I were running this organization... What would you do, Giant? I'd tell you what I'd do, Tiny. I'd want a lottery, that's what I'd do. 
Everybody likes a lottery. Everybody. And I'd split the take right down to the middle. One-fifth of the payoff in charity, and one-fifth of the boys. What about the other three-fifths? Well, well, a guy's got to get something for his big ideas. <laughs> <laughs> What's the scope? The play. What are we doing, genius? We're not doing anything for a while. Maybe you ain't, but we're taking up where Solly left off. You'll end up in jail. If you goons read the newspapers instead of the comic books, you'd find out we have a new city administration. Look, don't go Joe College on us. We know what's happening just the same as you do. I want time for everything to settle down. And I don't want you knuckleheads screwing up my plans. Your plans? You heard it right the first time. So you're the planning commission now? That's right. I'm the planning commission. Pretty smart. How'd you get in so good with the new mayor? I went to the library and read a book. I see. Thanks for telling me. All right, now get this straight. We're staying out of the rackets for now. You want to know something, Ben? Why don't you shut up when I'm talking? I didn't hear a word you said. I must be getting deaf. All right, Graner, I'll say it again for you. Nothing moves till I say so. Until the first snow? Is that what you said, genius? <laughs> he doesn't want anybody screwing up his plan. Stay out of the rackets till I... <laughs> no. I may have to kill you, Lenny. I don't like killing people, never did. But you're not people, I don't think I'd mind a bit. You talk big. Sully was a big operator. Yeah, I know, Sully was a big operator, jet propelled. I'm gonna handle things a little different. Anybody can talk. I can deliver, too. What did you deliver lately, Benji? City Hall. I got it unlocked with an old friend of mine, the new chief of police. Dave Dietz is gonna be the boy with the star. And Lenny. You'd be impossible to miss. You're not much of a chief of police if you can't pull enough rank to get a better office. Next week. Then I, uh, I don't know what to say, except that, well, however you did it, you know I'm grateful. Yeah. Did you bring this? Your first bribe. I, uh, just came from Jansen's. He's gonna be all right, Ben. Yeah, I think everything's gonna be all right. You wanna listen to me? Uh, sure, Ben, shoot. You may be the richest cop in 11 Western states. Oh? Jansen's gonna be happy. The voters are gonna be happy. As a matter of fact, it's going to be one big happy family. Nice. If you can do it. I can do it. In the meantime, you do your job. Clean up the city. Stop the prostitution. Nail the thieves and the grifters. And uh, make the taxpayers feel safe in their beds at night. What's in it for you? All I'll take are 30 nice, clean, quiet gambling locations where the suckers can lose their money till their heart's content. No trouble. Simple. Just let them throw their money at little Benji. Playing both ends against the middle, aren't you? Of course. I like you, Dave. We understand one another. You forget two things. Frank Jensen's got six million dollars. He owes nobody nothing. He can pick up a phone real easy and tell his chief of police to close down those nice 30 locations. And you also forget Sally's boys. They're liable to jam you in a barrel of cement and dump it in the bay. Nice of you to worry about me, Dave, but don't. I got it figured right down the line. Apparently, there's some confusion all the way down the line, Mr. Grace. With the election and all, and Mr. Casper leaving, that might account for the lower figures. You worry about the books, Ames. I'll worry about the reasons. Oh, yes, sir. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, Mr. Grace. What do you hear about Mr. Casper? I mean, the word is that he's in Mexico. That's as good a place as any if you're up for a grand jury indictment. How much cash do we have? A personal? You mean Mr. Casper's? Well, the last audit I remember three months ago, Mr. Casper had 160,000 on hand. Hmm. Where is it? Well, I imagine the beach house. I think we'd better get it out. Well, I can't get to it, Mr. Grace. 
I'll talk to you about it later. Hold all the appointments, Betsy. Mrs. McCullough's coming by to pick me up, and I'm not even dressed yet. Come in. Mrs. McCullough here already? Well, not exactly. Don't tell me other people see you this early in the morning. Oh, hi there. You're hard to contact. Mm. Sit down. Coffee, Mr. Grace? No, thanks. I'll be there shortly. Miss Lyons, it's 9 o'clock. Oh, you'd better get started with Miss Dorothy if she's ready. Oh, I'm sorry I look like this. Couldn't you telephone first? I'd like to say my thank yous in person. Thanks for putting Dave Dietz in. You won't be disappointed. Ben Frank wants very badly to talk with you. I have to drive up the coast today. Isn't he satisfied? Naturally. He just wants to meet the man who made it possible. I'll buy him lunch sometime. After I bought you three or four. Mm. If I had my choice, I'd prefer dinner. Have you and Junie settled the problems of the world? A couple of them. You all ready to go, Dora? Martha said so. The appointment at Dr. Mapes is for 9.30, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And don't forget, Martha will wait for you. Looks like everybody's clearing out. See you later, you two. Oh, are you driving somewhere? Well, then you can drop me. No need to bother Martha at all. Oh, honey, all our plans have been made. Oh, it's right on Ben's way, the professional building on Woodward. The doctor's going to check my eyes. <laughs> don't drop her off. Oh, but Ben, you're busy. And Dorothy, how would you get home? Well, you drop me at the doctor's. I'll take a taxi home. Don't you trust me? Miss Lyons residence. It's Mrs. McCullough. Yes. Oh, yes, dear. I'll, I'll be waiting. I thought you'd have maneuvered us together long before this. Maneuver? I didn't maneuver anything. I knew the first minute I looked at you, we'd end up together. And so did you. What made you so sure? We're two of a kind. Both bad. Cigarette, please. Look, kid, we've both got things to do. Don't you think you should get in there? You did know I was going to a head drinker, didn't you? No, but it sounds like a heck of an idea. You're quite a problem. Want to solve me? Hey, the lighter. I'll give it back. Come again. You crazy. <laughs> you play rough, don't you? Oh, I can play smooth. Hey. Hey. Where are you going? The professional building's back there. I'm not going in for that couch bit. I can't go home for a couple of hours, so I thought I'd take a look around at the stores. How would you like to drive to the beach with me? The best offer I've had today. <laughs> This is a beach house? How about that? Smooth. What a layout. Uh, uh. 
always. Sally liked the simple things. Like girls, too. Should we see if it fits? Sure, try it on. If it doesn't fit, the closets upstairs are full of them. I got you covered. Put that thing down. It's dangerous. This little thing. You screwball little idiot. Has you got any sense? You can kill somebody with that thing. <laughs> I told you we were the same. I should have skipped Dr. Mapes weeks ago. Come here. Go take this swim. Cool off a little. Just a little. Beaches down there. I hope he won't be interrupted. Sally's in Mexico. Come up. June ever been here, Benji? No. Score one for little sister. Any idea what time it is? 
On Dr. Mape's couch, I watch the clock. On your couch? Come here. Here, take my car and get out of here. Leave it at the medical building. No, I can't. Hold it right there, baby. I said freeze. You want your girlfriend to get it, Ben? Do as he says. Get out of here. <gasps> Sally sent bail for James, too. He'll take care of you, bright boy. Sally Casper. You idiot. Get up. <clears throat> Sally went bail. I went bail for both of you. Here's a receipt. Read it. Ben, I... I didn't know. All right, now you know. Get out of here. Go the way you came. How is she? She's fine. She's asleep. I'll run along. She, uh, talked a lot before she went to sleep. All about this afternoon. What about this afternoon? The beach house. What went on. You two. She said enough. Believed her. I don't know what to believe. Believe me, it's you I want. Are you sure you don't want both of us? Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben. My sister. She loves them. How is she? Oh, she hasn't come in yet. Are you sure? Yes, sir. There she is. Yes? Sergeant Cheney, Police Department. Oh, what is it, Sergeant? We just tagged a cab from downtown. Driver said he brought the fare here. I'd like to talk to her. Oh, well, there must be a mistake, officer. Nobody's come here except Miss Lyons. Red hair, 5'5 five, five to 5'7. Five, in the early 20s. Green dress, green shoes. What do you want her for? Theft. Hathaway's department store. Pearl necklace. Sales girl wasn't too sure. Was afraid to do anything until she checked her stock. Told somebody to get the cab license. But it 
Couldn't have been Dorothy. She's not here. I wonder if I could take a look around for Dorothy. Yes, I wish you would. I'll show you to her room. man is from Hathaway's. How do you do? Those pearls are mine. I've had them for years. Sim Pearl Neck, 152.50, tax 10%. Had them for years, hmm? Put on your green dress and your green shoes and let's go. Joni, help me. Let her go. I'll pay for them. Please don't arrest her. She's sick. Five minutes. I'll leave the door open if that's all right. Joni! Oh, Dorothy! You promised. Oh, you promised. Okay, boys, break it up. This way. Three grand. And four is seven. Hey, Ben, here's Miss Lyon. Take a breather, boys. You've got to help me. Dorothy was arrested this afternoon. Same thing? Hathaway's. The police came right to the house for her. Tell me about it. She... She took a pearl necklace. A Sergeant Cheney came to the house about five and took her to Lincoln Heights. Hello. Dave D. still there? Ben Grace. Dave, there's a girl in Lincoln Heights, Dorothy Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S after grand larceny. I want you to get her out. And I want you to make it look like she was never booked. I can't do that, Ben. I'll have the board down on my neck. I don't care how you do it. It has to be done. This comes straight from Jensen. All right, call me back. I'm home. I can't believe it. Believe what? You. Lying to deeds. Everything, Ben, is this house and what's going on in it. It's Al Casper's house. He's holed up in Mexico. Then it's true. 
All the terrible things I've heard about you lately. I didn't want to believe them. It's the same old operation, isn't it? And you talked me into suggesting Dave Dietz for chief of police. And you go right on your merry way. Oh, Saul Casper's out. But it's the same system. As long as people gamble, there's going to be a system. If I don't operate it, someone else will. If I have any sense, any courage, I'd go straight to Frank Jensen and tell him. You think that would stop it? Or oh, a little while, maybe. But before me, there was Casper, and there'd be someone else after me. Grow up. The money's here. I'm going to get mine. Hello. What about the file on the girl? Yeah, Dave, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Right now, I'm interested in getting that girl here as soon as possible. All right, good night. Thanks. She'll be here within an hour. Good service. You gonna tell Jensen? You know I won't. For two reasons. I know you won't because of Dorothy. What's the other reason? You know that, too. Told you it was all a mistake. Why would I want to steal a little thing like that? Darling, oh, it's all right. Ben Grace managed to get you out. Oh, Ben, thanks. Oh, you saved my life. It was horrible, horrible. Forget it. It never happened. I think we could all use a drink. Oh, you bet I could. Three feet high. Nice layout you got here. Am I going to stay for a while? Might not be a bad idea. Be safer. She needs skilled care and rest. Oh, Ben must have a housekeeper. I can get lots of rest right here. Darling, you'll be much better off at home. Now, drink your drink, then we'll all go back, huh? All right, if you say so. Have you plenty of time to see Ben's house? But, Dietz, you assured me you were after the same thing I was. Clean, honest government. What good does it do to get rid of a solid Casper if you're taking orders from another hoodlum? Mr. Mayor, nobody should have even heard about it. I still... That's not the point. I did hear about it. I want a complete report by tomorrow. Even if it means I go out of office and you go back to pounding a beat. Yes, sir. After all, Mr. Mayor, it was Ben Grace who told me to. What's that got to do with it? Well, I mean, I... I figured that after all, you and him... That's all, Dietz. Yes, sir. June, will you come in, please? Yes, sir. Yes, Frank? I'm going to be pretty blunt, June. I know all about Dorothy's arrest, especially how she was let go. She should never have been arrested. She's not a criminal. She needs psychiatric care. But she was arrested, and she's got to face the charges. The governor has given me until 5 tomorrow afternoon to have her arraigned and let normal procedure follow. The governor? The governor. Who could have me impeached? Dorothy was on probation. But you don't have any idea what it would do to her to have to go back to prison. Do you know what Dr. Mapes said? That she's on the edge of a real breakdown. That any emotional shock... I'll do deserve... everything I can to see that she gets to the right kind of institution. She's not going to be thrown into a dungeon. All right, Frank. What do you want me to do? I want you to bring her in tomorrow. I'm not going to have them issue a warrant for her. June. This can't change how I feel about you. 
except feeling sorry, knowing what you have to live with. I know. You're very kind, Frank. I should have known you'd be like this. Don't you know by now I don't judge you? I just love you. Lovely, honey. Hello, Martha. Uh, no one called Miss Lyons. She's been fine, absolutely fine. How do you feel? Never felt better. Slept like a log. Door. Things are in a mess. I hate to have to tell you this, but... You have to go back tomorrow. Back to jail? Frank says it doesn't have to be prison, just a nice, quiet rest home someplace close by. But you have to face the charges. A nice state institution. All the modern conveniences. Steel bars in every like window. That. Shock treatments in different buildings. Dorothy, please. I've been there. I know what it's like. I've been to the good ones, the crummy ones, the ones you wear uniforms, the ones you don't. I'm an expert. Honey, it's for your own good. You've got to get well. Don't you see what happened yesterday could happen any time and that it will be prison? All I want for you is what's best. All you want is to get rid of me. You want Ben for yourself. Oh, let's leave Ben Grace so out of this. Press a button and little Dor is shipped off to some nice nut house. Oh, Dor, how can you talk to me like that? I've tried to look after you ever since Dad died. <gasps> Looked after me. I've been shoved off on more people than you can shake a stick at. Well, I had to make a living, didn't I? Oh, sure. You had to make a living. You had to get ahead. Be promoted. One day you woke up and realized suddenly you hadn't been on the cover of time yet. I gave you everything I could. Because you felt guilty. You had a bad conscience. You know how it started. That charm bracelet, the one Mama gave to you. I had to have it. So I stole it. I liked taking it. I liked the sensation. It was fun. So it was you, June. You! And all the things you bought me, they pay off a lot of years, don't they? A lot of years? What do you think I've been through a lot of years? Holding my breath every time I saw a cop pass by the house. Trying to fix things and square things and pay things off. All because my sister didn't have any more morals than an alley cat. Oh, you're a fine one to tell me how I should have lived my life. If I didn't earn money, who'd get you out of trouble? And who'd pay off those lovely friends of yours you seem to attract the way garbage does flies? You're right, June. You're always right. I'll have to go back tomorrow. All right, Sergeant, that's all. What's the idea, Dave? That cop was rusting me like a pickpocket. I told him to bring you in. You think you've got more privileges than any other citizen? All right, Chief. What's your problem? My problem I'll worry about. Jansen wants you in his office this afternoon. Oh, I think you better calm Jansen down. He's liable to get an earful about honest Dave Dietz. You'll be there, Ben. I won't send out just a cop. I'll have squad cars all over that beautiful driveway of yours. I seem to remember, Chief, that you're the one who sprung the lock on her. Good with a knife, aren't you? Use your friends till they start dragging, then cut them right off. What are you beefing about? 
Those look like $50 shoes to me, copper. Now you listen, Ben. Dorothy Lyons is just another thief right now. And you're just another guy who asked me to do something out of line. Yes? All right, in a minute. You both better be in Danson's office. On time. I kept it on hand as you told me, Mr. Grace. 30, I think. Is that all? No, sir. No, there's a, there's an additional six that I always keep here. I'll take it. What's that? Mr. Cother asked for it. Sully's attorney? Yes. Cother was afraid that Mr. Casper's safe deposit boxes and everything would be subpoenaed by the state's attorney. What's the attorney? key to? The vault at the beach house. The vault? Yes, in the basement, you know, behind the furnace. I'll look after that. How do I charge the 36000 Mr. Briggs? Charge it to the blue account. Yes, sir. I'll put it back next week. Betsy, no more appointments. The mayor's gone for the day and I'm just leaving. Cancel everything. Everything but me. Ben. Frank wanted to see you, but I've he... I've got a better idea. What's that? You and me, no Dorothy, no Jansen, no Dietz. I want to pull out with you. You know I can't leave Dorothy. Why not? What did she ever do for you? You can't run away from anything. Is it because of him? No, not anymore. All right, then, lady, you got yourself a deal. We're two hours from San Francisco. After that, we just put a pin on the map. Scare you? Yes, it does scare me. I've got $36,000 in cash here. After I step up the beach, I'll have another 160000 more. <sighs> two weeks ago, maybe. Even two months ago, maybe. But not now, Ben. It's too late. I'm sorry. It's too bad, lady. We'd have made a great combination. you gave her, you know. I've got a lovely crab salad for lunch, but I wondered about the melon. Dorothy!
My name is Dorothy. Well, how do you do? I just walked in. Where is everybody? Are, Are you, you a friend of Ben's? <laughs> That's uh, not exactly the expression I'd use. Are you? It's not the expression I'd use exactly either. I wonder when he's going to get here. Not that there's anything wrong with the people who are here already. Just that I'm anxious. Don't you know when he'll show up? Who knows with Ben Grace. But I bet if you knew I was waiting here for him, nice and quiet on his couch, he'd be here sooner than this. He uh, thinks that much of you, Dorothy? He thinks that much of me, Dorothy. Stand up, Dorothy. No arguments? Put on your shoes. You wouldn't put me away any place, would you? Of course I wouldn't. I know Ben wouldn't. That's why I came to Ben's house. I know Ben. You'll see him real soon. Nice material. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Ben. The old bus all gassed up? Yeah, she's set to go, but what do you want it for? You can tool around in this tiger. I'm driving the coast with this boat. Can you turn this over to my uncle? Uh, you're the boss, but gee, I spent two days polishing this up. You know, Ben, driving that new one, everyone knew it was Ben Grace. Now you're just going to be another schmo on the highway. I never thought of that. Say, Mr. Grace, as long as you're not going to use it, i got a real hot date tonight. And would you sure. go see you? Here. Ah, knock her there. Thanks. Doesn't anyone answer it there? Ben will answer. Always takes Ben a little time to get around to things. Just ask him now. Tell him you're having a little party all by yourself and you miss him. <gasps> that wouldn't be quite the truth, would it? All by myself, I mean. <laughs> I don't think he's going to answer. Hello. Hello. Oh, is that you, Mr. Grace? What's keeping you, Mr. Grace? Here I am, all by myself, in Sally's nice little beach house. <laughs> if you'd be here, it'd be a lot cozier, wouldn't it? <laughs> Okay? Fine. <laughs> I like you. Oh. How'd you know where to find it all? 
I'm an old friend of Ben's. Uh, never saw so much money in all my life. Uh, you, uh, you gonna give it all to Ben when he comes? I'll give it to him. Could I have some? Just one? Sure. Why hmm? not? <gasps> you earned it, Dorothy. I did? <laughs> If you want more, just ask for it. I don't mind. No fun that way. You ever been to Mexico, honey? Never have. Like to go with me? Maybe I'd like that very much. Ben. Wait a minute. Huh? You'll spoil the game. Now you sit over there in that chair, right there, facing the door. Come in. That's all you say. Just come in. Come in. Come in. Door. Where's Ben? Who is this, Dorothy? My big sister, June. Always walks in at the wrong times. I'm taking you home. I know where you want to take me. Dorothy! I'm taking you home. Leave her alone. You will leave her alone, Casper. Can't you see she's sick? Sick? <laughs> That's a terrible way to talk about a cute kid. <laughs> Come here, honey. <laughs> sick? I think she's nothing but a laugh. <laughs> He doesn't think I'm sick. So you're that smart girl Jensen always had on the side. I got a real good reason to kill you. I got you to thank for Mexico, you and Ben. Back up, smart girl. I, are you really going to give it to her? Run, Dorothy. Run! Why should I, honey bunch? Yes, why should she? The boys will be here about nine and we'll have ourselves a barrel of laughs. <laughs> then I'm taking little Dorothy and flying down to Mexico with her. And we'll be <laughs> flying like bats, upside down in every which way. <laughs> you sit there where I can keep an eye on you, honey. Hey, maybe we'll have ourselves a ball right here. <laughs> keep walking backwards, slow, so you don't stumble over anything. Feel the door, you feel the handle behind you? No! <laughs> Back out on the terrace. Too bad you won't be around for the rest of the floor show, smart girl. Pretty soon, the tide will be taking you bye-bye. Get out of here. Come on, help me grab some of this. I'm not going with you. What do you mean you're not going? You're mixed up in a killing. What kind of a witness you think she'll make? You haven't any part of this. Go on, take your money. 
You've got everything you've ever wanted. You're quite a girl, aren't you? Sally's men will be here at nine. You better get out of here while you can. How far do you think I'd get with this bullet in me? What are you doing? Four. Three. Let me speak to Chief Deeds. Dave, this is Ben. Oh, shut up. Look, I want you to get up to Sally's beach house at 9 o'clock, sharp. Bring a full squad and bring an ambulance. And Dave, be on time. 9 o'clock, sharp! Lenny, Bruce, grind it. Get me in the house. The rest of you guys go around the terrace. I got Ben Grace holed up in there. Let's get her upstairs. You're going to have help, lots of help. Don't worry. You're going to be all right. Yes, but... John, you come with me. I'll be with you, darling. You go to sleep. Rest. Down. What's the matter? This type of work out of your line? Got to bring Lenny and all the boys for big man. Is that the kind of odds a big man needs? <laughs> Got me zeroed in, and you still can't do it yourself. Big man. Shut up, bright boy. No dirty hands, no guts. No. Oh, I forgot. You work on the brain level now. Too important to the organization. Sally Casper. Gutless wonder. All right, you asked for it, genius. You asked for it once too often. Little by little, I'm going to cut you to pieces. <laughs> Man can still handle it, can't he? How's about the other side? Still. 
still got your legs, genius. Johnny? 